Hey guys, so Queenie is now announcing that she and Dewey are not together. Now, I don't know if he's still in Jamaica or he went back to the UK. Now, he's got a job in the UK, so if he doesn't go back, I guess he will quit the job. So if he goes back to the UK, who would he be staying with? That's my um, chain of thought right here. I'm wondering, who will he stay with if he goes back? Or is he going to give up his job and stay in Jamaica? And if so, concerning the paperwork now, is he a permanent resident or is he still waiting on his paperwork to be done? Drop it in the comments section, folks, if you know any details as to what's going on with his paperwork. But I think Queenie has uh, realized that this is not going to work, especially when he went down there to Jamaica with her, with all the family, grandchildren, children, amongst her mother. And was disrespecting her in front of her mother. So her mother had to slap her. I don't know why the mother slapped her, but she says on account of Dewey, the mother slapped her. That tells me that she probably was siding with Dewey against maybe a family member. Because why would your mother slap you if you're not siding with Dewey? Who is re he's respect disrespecting you. And if you side with him, then that's... I can see why the mother would slap her. I don't know the details as to the beef between Dewey, her son, and Dewey's friend, but I would think if she had sided, and I'm saying if, if she sided with Dewey against her family member, any one of them, I would think that's where the slap came in because she said she received a slap from her mother on account of Dewey. Because we all know Queenie is stupefied when it comes to Dewey. He can do no wrong. She cuss people out in the UK for him. And I can see her cussing her family members out for him also. She came out there and she said when it comes to her kids, she's not going to side with Dewey. But who knows? Maybe she did it. And that's why she received that slap. I don't know. This is all alleged. So we heard from Queenie and what she had to say concerning her marriage, that she's over, she's done, it's kaput, okay? And I'm telling you guys, it's no surprise to none of us. We saw this coming, although she was trying to hold the, you know, hold it together with glue. It couldn't work because do we don't want the marriage, clearly. Anytime a young man gets out there and disrespect you with other women, kissing the other women on camera, I mean, it's alleged that he got a child out there and all kinds of disrespect. And in front of other people, she said he's disrespecting her. Then, it's of course, it's not going to work because Dobie is still in the streets. His head is still in the streets with the boys running around with the girls. He's a young man who feels he's got to sow his oats. And Queenie want to wife him down and, and put him in this um, grandpappy and, and granddad mode. And he's not about that. So when he got to Jamaica with Queenie, with the kids and the grandkids, she figured they're going to have a nice vacation. But that was a vacation from hell, okay? Because it broke up that marriage. And I don't know if they're going to reconcile and get back together because you never know with Queenie when it comes to Dewey, she's stupid about him, okay? But we don't know if a reconciliation is going to happen because she's still saying, I still love my husband. I still love my husband. You know, if that man tell her any sweet words, I think she's going to run right back. Because that's, that's how stupid she is about this guy. But I think she got a backbone this time around while she was in Jamaica. Because she got a family around her encouraging her to leave him. Allegedly. So that's where that, um, I'm leaving him. I'm he can divorce me. I don't want this marriage anymore. That's where all that is coming from, from the family. Allegedly. The family is encouraging her. They're giving her their support. If she wants to leave him, it's okay. Don't worry about the marriage because it's one-sided. Queen is the one trying to hold it together. But the thing is, when you're trying to hold a marriage together, you can't treat your husband like if he's a boy or your child. And Queenie, she means well. I see where she means well. But the way she treats Dewey, it's like if he's another child. She got to tell him what to do, how to do it, where to go, when to speak. I mean, not literally when to speak, but you guys get the gist of what I'm saying.
you cannot pigeonhole a person into doing exactly what you want them to do because they, they're free thinking. They got a mind of their own. They're able to make their own decisions. Queenie said, we are one. That's what she said about her and Doobie. They're one. But guess what? They're not one. They're two completely separate individuals. And that is the mistake a lot of men and women make when they get into a relationship. They kind of want to mesh with the other person and say, we are one. You're not one. You're two completely separate individuals who are capable of making your own decisions. And when you make your decisions, you got to discuss it with the other person, your spouse, and come to an agreement. But you don't say we are one and expect the person to bow to every beck and call. Because that was the main problem I see with Queenie and Dewey. Whatever she wants him to do or wanted him to do, if he didn't do it, she would blow up. That's what I saw in social media. Allegedly. And then she turned around and said, he don't have a backbone. He don't have a voice. He's not independent thinking. I got to do the thinking. Well, guess what? People get tired of that. You doing the thinking. They want to think for themselves. And I think going down there in Jamaica with among his friends and all the females, the young females, he got that freedom that he always wanted. The, well, not always. The new from freedom that he had before, he rediscovered. So Dewey and Queenie were on the live. He, he's talking to her. You know, they're, they're FaceTiming each other and talking. And she's telling him, you're not coming back in my house in the UK. Because when you came down here to Jamaica, you moved out. You let your brethren come and move you out. We're supposed to be on vacation with the family. And you're moving out and you're going for, you're gone for days. Enjoying yourself with all the women and your friends and you're drinking and you're gambling and all of that. And I'm here and the family's asking me, where's Dewey? I don't know where Dewey is. So no, you can't come back in my house in the UK. You have to find somewhere else to go. And I think when it dawned on him that the house in the UK he can't return to, that's when he was telling her, well, I didn't say I'm not going to return to the UK. And he was trying to like smooth things over. But the more he tried to smooth it over, the worse it got. The more Queenie dug down deep and she was not budging. She said, I tried and tried. I don't want this marriage anymore. But I think what's going on is that Queenie has come to realize that Dewey is all about playing. He got so much playing him. You know, some men, when they get married, they're still on the streets wanting to do the same things. The street is in their head. You know, when I say the streets, I mean the, the womanizing, the running in the dance hall, among, you know, they're around their friends, they're drinking, they're gambling, they're everything else, instead of concentrating on building a life with the woman that they marry. So we got to wonder, why did he marry her, if that's the case? Was it just for papers? I don't know. This is alleged. Drop it in the comments, folks, if you think it was for papers. But here is what Dewey had to say, because to me, it's kind of unfair that Queenie is always talking about the business in her marriage. And as soon as Dewey opens his mouth, then he is a bitch ass. You know, he is the one who shouldn't be opening his mouth to air the business of the relationship when she's talking about it every single day. So let's hear what Dewey had to say. The reason being, you understand, this case of boom and take away myself. And even I go into the full history, me just go into half a history. Because when me hear them, I say, them, them I say things to make me look bad. You understand? You get me? I mean, I mean, it's not that bad person. You get me? The reason being for me, they by myself at the moment. You understand me? I say, I'm a bad mind. You see, if I'm a bad mind, somebody, me can't deal with a person. And them are going to tell me, say, me bad mind. You understand? If I'm a bad mind, you know, in a sense, me steer around you. If you go tell me say I'm a bad mind, you know, make no sense, Mr. Ironia. You. you get what I say? Yeah, for instance, for example, me, 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 me I go perform for your show, we are going to perform for your show. You see me? And all of that. And as I say, me I wire for weed. Now, why you for no weed? It comes turn upside at me the night, and it comes turn upside at me. You have a spliff in your hand, but I didn't even say I have a spliff. I want to say I have a spliff now. You get me, Mr. Issa. Boom. 
no, Mr. Sabu Pansy, I would eat. With the weed, I'm with the weed. She offer read already in I'm a gear, my own. You understand? Say, I'm a gear, my own, I'm a sister, she have a weed. But take back my weed. So they take back my take back my weed, but my wife elbow me in my belly. They get me, I'm a stay, so I hold it. They get me. I never argue with her, I never make no problem. But I take back my weed, because she have a weed. You understand? She called me outside and she called me outside. Remember, we're not profiling now, nothing. You understand me? I say, I'm a stay, so boop. And go outside, I'm going to try to draw me one side. You see me? And I talk to me and I say, she don't like how me do you that. But me I say, I don't like how you do me now that because you been have a, you have a weed. You understand? And I like you not have a weed. You have a weed. You get me? So I see you with the weed and I take back the weed. You see me? So she I say, she give me, she, she give me how much weed, blah, 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 after that and go for it. So I say, I me have the weed. So she start calling me drunk and dog shit. You get me? Me, me a husband. Me and I no bumbo clad, dark shit, no, no blood clad, junk You hear yeah, that, that lower my feelings. Me not fuck nobody want to say, if I pit me, I'm a petty, I want to blood clad ever. Me never you call my wife dark, dark shit or, 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 or junk her. Verbally, she, me and I never yet stand up so, and me call her so, yet. You yeah, hear yeah, that? In a real life, me a man and me have feelings. You yeah, get me? So when my wife tell me that, me no bother want to do no performance. My blood clad vibes dead, my vibes broke. Where you tell me about? Eh? Me is a human being. You hear that? You get me? And she have me from this, I show me not go up on the stage. You understand? But if you if you lower my my, my, my feelings, where you expect? I forgot to go, go, go perform. And when I go to go perform, people say, Oh, I never put out him this and I never put out him that. I better me not go up there. You get me? So why me not go up there? It cause one of that tension. I so come now, me and he said, me bad mind. You understand? So, do we feel as if the children that Queenie have are not into him? If he calls them 20 times out of the day, 21 times as he put it, they're not going to respond because they don't respect him as a husband because he's so young. And Queenie, and I, I guess Queenie never sat down with them as a family, all of them sit down as a family and discuss the fact that she's marrying this young man. Because a lot of times that's what you have to do when you're introducing someone into your, your children's lives, although they're adults. You still got to sit down with them and say, listen, I'm marrying someone who is your age, who is quite younger than me, and I want you guys to accept this person. You don't have to call him dad because he's not your dad. He's your age. He can be my son in terms of years, but this is the person that I love and I want you all to accept him because he says he and the kids really don't get along. And I'm wondering where all this strife is coming from. So I guess Dewey is kind of tired of it all. Queenie's tired of it, counseling him, trying to bring him up to speed to be a husband and father in her eye. As she sees a husband and a, fa and a father should be. And he's tired of the nagging because she's always arguing, fussing, and fighting. I have love for my wife. I still love my wife. But when I hear my wife say, I'm a blood clot, bad minor. Eh? I want to hear, man. I want to fuck there. Eh? I pussy my wife, have a cocky me, have me can't bad mind my wife, and nothing at all. I hear that in a real blood clot life. I hear that. Some things me even want to go in a farm. Because I'm a middle. But I hear the panel live and talk or something. But, but I'm not in a youth. Them. And you youth them been not in a me farm. You youth them been not in a me already. You hear that? So I don't know where you tell me about. I you talk about me around. And I run me around. I stay me, I stay far. You see me? Because as, as you and your royal crazy them set me a whole your dung farm. You see me? I don't want to whole your dung no longer. In a real life, I don't want to. You see me? I mean, I want to bad mind you. So I just stay, I just stay my, I just stay my, my ways. Okay, guys, that's just some tidbit. A little bit of what Dewey had to say. He said his wife is calling him bad mind because he refused to go and perform with her. And the only reason why he was refusing was because of the tension between them. She's expecting him to go on stage like if they don't have tension, but he can't perform 
if he's on attention and because of the weed situation. She, he said she had a weed in the dance hall. He had a weed. She took his weed. And when he noticed that she had one already, he took his back. That's what's caused all this new beef between them. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's such a small thing. It's a little hiccup. Can't believe something like herb is going to cause this marriage to be dissolved. Herb that is going to break this marriage up. Is that it? Is that what you mean to tell me? That's going to put a nail on the coffin? A little thing like weed? A little cigarette looking thing? I mean, it's ridiculous. But in any event, I'm going to tell you guys, do not allow the little things to get in the way of your marriage. You know, if you can't battle the little things and get over the little hurdles, what about the big things in, in your marriage that comes up? Then you will not be able to battle it and the marriage will not be able to sustain itself. So maybe they need to go into counseling. And I think Queenie said she has tried to get Dewey into counseling and he refused. I think that's what she said before. And sometimes if the person does not want to go into mainstream counseling, then maybe a family member can be the counselor. And the both of you sit, like you, like Queenie got a mom and dad, they can do the counseling and have Queenie and Dewey sit before them and they advise them on what's, what they should do in the marriage to remedy it. They should try new things in terms of new tools they can give them in for them to work on it. But to just, in Dewey's word, he's staying away from Queenie because he said she told him that he malice her, meaning jealous of her. And so he got an attitude about that. That's why he didn't want to go on stage. But it all started with this V that they were supposed to be sharing with each other. And he took back that got her pissed off according to him. But if the little things are going to push the marriage over the edge, then you know the marriage was rocky from the get-go. Or it could be that's his way out. Because a lot of times when people want out in a marriage, they look for the little less argument, and then they use that as the reason for them not going back to the person. And remember in the past, Queenie kept saying, do we got to divorce her? She's not divorcing him. But well, guess what? If the marriage is that bad, sometimes you got to do the divorcing. You can't let anybody disrespect you in that manner. And then you try to hold on to the marriage. For what? Now, here we have do we now refusing to come back. That's the last word I got on the streets that he is not going back to the marriage. Let's continue to listen to the audio. Yeah, I understand. I used to me and I have nothing. Nothing me and I have. Hey, that. Nothing me and I have. You get me? It's just the main factor. You keep on a come, 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 come. And I remember until they say, you're watching up. Me not in and I argue. You still a come, you still a come, you still a come. I eat bring it to the party there. You hear that? Because I see me a drive every day in a vehicle and I tell you, let me out, let me out. You still a argue, argue with me, argue, argue with me, argue, argue with me. Till you have to tell me some bad mind, I'm a bad mind. You know what that make me feel? Eh? You see, I'm a dairy one people. You have to I'm a bad mind. You get me? And I will literally come out of the vehicle and I walk around stranger just for show you. Me, I run bumbo clear water for hear what my wife say. Eh? Bad mind, yo. Must be sick in it, man. Before my bad mind, nobody. Before my bad mind, nobody for her. Man, my bad mind, my blood clot. Selfie. It just sounds to me as if. Someone saying that he bad mind them is like the worst thing you can say to him. You know, some people have their triggers. We all got a word that a person would say to us that would really send us in a tailspin. That we will we'll cuss a person out. Everybody got that trigger word or phrase. For him, it's bad mind. You don't want anybody telling him that he malice them or he bad mind them. That triggered him, and it's like the worst thing Queenie could have said to him. Apparently, because now he's refusing to go back home to her. 
And they're on vacation. They're supposed to be on vacation. So, be hard. What do we have to say? Now, Queenie said that he wanted to get out of the car. The car is moving. He wants to get out of the car. And he said he wanted to get out, telling her that he wants to get out because she kept arguing. And he did not want to argue. So, instead of arguing with her, he wanted to exit the car. And this seems to be the running theme between them because she said every time there is a big discussion, big argument, he runs. Every little thing he runs, instead of sitting with her and discussing the problem, he wants to just run out the room and exit. Some people are like that. They're non-confrontational. That's what it signals to me. And that's why they need to sit down with a counselor or family member and iron out their differences. Because he says he still loves his wife. She says she still loves him. So I think if they were to go into counseling, they can really iron out their differences and make the marriage work. But really what I see for the two of them, because now I know they really love each other. He says he still loves his wife. And... um but he's got to work on his mindset. Why is it he loves his wife, but yet he wants to run around and blatantly disrespect her with other young girls? So that's something he needs to really sit down with a counselor and iron out. If he's about that life and he still wants the young girls and running around, then marriage is not for him right now. Maybe later on, maybe they, maybe they should have just dated and not get married. That might have worked out better for them. Because some people are not ready to get married and you love them and they love you, but they're just not ready because they know they're going to cheat. So maybe they should just separate, live their separate lives. And when Dewey is in a better space, when he's ready for a true commitment with Queenie, then maybe he can come back and they can reconcile. But before then, I don't see this really getting anywhere if they don't go into counseling, if he don't work on why he's doing the things that he does. Queenie have to work on always wanting to argue. What she looks at as, you know, I want to talk to my husband and iron out certain uh, things. But it's how you say it. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. If you're going to do it in a confrontational way and you're arguing and arguing, that's what he's running from. And Dewey is not the only guy like that. Most men don't like a woman arguing all the time. So they leave the house. They escape. They get away. They go around their boys. Maybe they find a young lady who is not argumentative to chill with that person. Because if you're going to be arguing and arguing all the time, that's what men calls a nagging wife always on your case for something like if you're a little boy when a man is married and in a relationship that's the last thing they want to hear because they left that with their mother their mother was naggy for some of those mothers who are naggy like that always on the, the man's case the young man's case and it get away from that and get married to a woman if the woman is like that they're gonna run so queenie got to work on that how she approaches Dewey to discuss problems in the marriage. She herself says she's awful and she's loud and vulgar. Those are the things she got to work on because although she's loud and vulgar on TV, when you're with your husband in private, that's the last thing he wants. He wants a wife who is more soothing, understanding, and able to listen and talk and not cuss and war when you're trying to iron out a problem. So it's what she's doing in her delivery to iron out the problems between her and Dewey. So they both need counseling for different reasons. Both of them need to work on themselves before they can get to that point where they can truly say, I love you unconditionally, and I'm not going to use my words to hurt you. Now, in terms of Dewey saying he did not perform because of she telling him that he malice her, well, what I got to say about that is the show must go on. If you and that person you're supposed to be performing with have beef and you're not speaking, you continue to perform because people pay money to see you. Even if it's not a paid 
performance. People are still there to see you, so you have to deliver what you promise. You promise to perform with Queenie and show up at the show and perform. That's what you do. I mean, you may not be speaking. How many performers do not agree or get along or speak even, and they still put on a show? It's called show business for a reason. You put on a show. Behind the scenes, you may not be speaking. So do we got to get his act together? When you make a commitment in terms of performing, you got to show up. You got to perform. So those are some of the things he have to learn. When it comes to the business of show business, he's got to learn that. Maybe he needs a manager to sit down with him and spell out in no uncertain terms what he needs to do and what his obligation is since he wants to break into that business. You can't say, well, I'm not speaking to my wife. We had an argument, so I'm not going to perform with her. No, it doesn't go like that. And then do we start to talk about the rental of his car? Queenie said it's idling, it's sitting there, nobody's using it, so rent it. He did not want to rent it. She went behind his back. She rented the car. The person they rented it to mashed up the front end. So the person came back again, wanted to rent it, and Dewey said, no, do not rent in my car. Queenie went behind his back again and rented the car. So Dewey said he felt as though whatever he has to say is like water. It doesn't hold any type of merit because he feels disrespected as if his voice is not being heard in the marriage. And so he's quite upset. Here's what he has to say about that. I tell you that. So one boy with no bad mind, nobody. Nobody pan got life. Because everybody have them own 20 blood club for our panic clock. You understand? And me now you no know when we are go up or when we are go down. So me can't bad mind a pussy. You hear that? And me can't bad mind a boy or a, or a girl in a real life. That ain't my style from. You hear that? So it's when me hear them talk they come from somebody where me love. Eh? You see, before it reach a point where it not for reach, you understand me? I say, me stay far in a real life. Whenever I never go live, you know. But for him, my wife, over there, talk some blood clot. Club on me a pitney. Pitney, my bum clot. Pitney, what? Me see my wife, as she said, carrying tall in a real life. You see me? This is why me no pay, me no pay no mind. You get me? One blood clot person come rent the vehicle from my wife. You get me? And... Before I even get the vehicle, I turn to my wife and say, Don't worry, that nigga, the my vehicle. You get me? I'm my wife. My wife look for me and say, All right. And by 20 minutes after, she look for me again and say, Why the vehicle? Why you going to make the vehicle stay there when somebody wanted to rent it? You understand it is gone out. I uh, uh, do it business and whatsoever. See, from here, my wife start go behind my talk. Eh? I don't have nothing more to say. Because I know what time is it. You get me? So I just leave it alone. You understand? Anyway, they rent him the vehicle. And when they rent him the vehicle, him goes up boop, and mash up the front end. I come to Jamaica and I see that. And, you know, my wife started it all back. Whatever, whatever. You get me? Come back again. And the man I go rent the vehicle. And I look for my wife again. And I say, don't rent the man my bum buckle the vehicle. Because you see what happened last time. You hear that? I'm going to see my wife go behind my back again. I rent the man the blood clot vehicle. You hear that? I want to rent him the vehicle this time. I don't know what happened if a police lock him up or what. I pick, I send she have to send man. She have to send to her friend them for go for care. So me uptown Red Hill's side. You hear that? So oh me now, for me, a man, I see me I make talk and nobody now take my talk. I mean, if you, me if you pay interest in that, I want to man blood clot that man. I want the bomb clot there. Make me my talk, my talk of soap, not even water, soap. You hear me tell you? Not even water, car water up. So the saga between Dewey and Queenie is still unfolding, folks. We don't know where it's going to end up. Stay tuned.
I'm over and out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and to this video. Thank you for watching.